morning. And good morning to those of you joining us uh, on cable. Well, it may be afternoon or evening, but greetings to you as well. I do not know what it is that you have come expecting today, and I like to caution you that you may not get what you want, but I pray that the Lord will provide for us exactly what each of us need this day. John calls people to repent, to clear the decks, to completely reorder their lives so that nothing gets in the way of the Lord's coming. The reading from Isaiah gives the context for this radical call, the assurance of forgiveness that encourages us to repent, the promise that the coming one will be gentle with the little ones. Isaiah calls us all to be heralds with John, to lift up our voices fearlessly and say, see, your God is coming. We say it to one another in worship in order to say it with our lives in a world in need of justice and peace. I would invite you to stand for the lighting of our Advent candles. We praise you, O oh God, for this circle of light that marks out days of preparation for Christ's Advent. As we light the candles on this wreath, kindle within us the fire of your Spirit, that we may be light shining in the darkness. Enlighten us with your grace, that we may welcome others as you have welcomed us. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain, and whose day draws near. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Our gathering hymn, 435, Lo, he comes with clouds ascending.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we hear God's word proclaimed. This morning's first reading is from Isaiah chapter 40. Comfort, O oh comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Today's responsive psalm is Psalm 85. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before the Lord, and shall prepare for God a pathway. Here ends the psalm. This morning's second reading is from 2 Peter chapter 3. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, 
and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading the lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire? But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth where the righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord and make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt about his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And he proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. O holy and loving Creator, as we prepare our lives for your coming among us, come and fill our hearts with your peace. In Christ's name we are blessed to pray. Amen. So this morning, you saw us light the second candle on our Advent wreath, the candle of peace. And it's with a little bit of irony that this candle of peace is also called the Bethlehem candle. And it is supposed to remind us of the journey that Mary and Joseph took to Bethlehem. What comes to mind for you when you hear the word peace? Is it the peace sign as in a greeting? Peace, y'all. Or maybe you recall a moment of sharing the peace of Christ with each other. As most often, my first thoughts usually come in the line of a song, when peace like a river Maybe you are in a moment right now where your soul has a longing for peace. Maybe you're yearning for something like the peace that passes all understanding sort of peace. The Oxford Dictionary defines peace as, one, freedom from disturbance, tranquility, and two, a state or period in which there is no war or a war has ended. 
freedom from disturbance. Who out of us is thinking about a huge soaker tub filled with hot water and lots of bubbles and possibly a glass of bubbly on the side? No one repeatedly calling your name or no one needing or wanting anything from you sort of piece. Who of you are seeing a vision of peace-filled tranquility, like the gentle rocking of a boat on a warm summer afternoon, a gentle breeze blowing through your hair? Unless you get motion sickness, then choose another tranquil image. I feel the need to caution you, beloveds, but the peace of our rub-a-dub dubbing and an afternoon on the boat can only bring us moments of peace. How often does this peace last? These moments of peace are sheer delight and they last as long as it takes for the water in the tub to drain or for your foot to hit the dock. That peace is gone like the pop of a balloon. And still, the longing and yearning for the peace that passes all understanding remains. We seek peace when we are lost and hurting hungry and broken. We seek peace when we have no idea how we will buy groceries or pay rent or the mortgage, let alone presents for Christmas. We seek peace when our families are divided in opinions, when dignity and trust is broken because of mental, emotional, or physical abuse. We seek peace when relationships are severed and the thought of working to restore what was broken or lost is just not worth it. We seek peace in these days of war. We continue to pray for Ukraine as they are forced to fight for their peace from the invasion of Russia. This war will continue through another cold European winter, and there will be no peace. The ceasefire in Gaza between Israel and Hamas ended and the fighting resumed again. There is still no peace in the Middle East. In fact, have you heard, Christmas has been canceled in Bethlehem this year. No public celebrations, no Christmas lights, no decorated tree to adorn the manger square. Pastor Munther Isaac from the Evangelical Lutheran Church, oh, sorry, from the Evangelical Lutheran Christmas Church in Bethlehem, says there will still be a manger scene in their sanctuary. However, instead of laying in a manger of straw surrounded by Mary and Joseph, the shepherds, the animals, and the angels, a swaddled baby doll will lay in the midst of the rubble from a shattered building. The Winnipeg Free Press quotes a Christian woman in Gaza who says, our hearts are broken and we are full of fear and sadness. We are peaceful Christians and reject violence from both sides. Love, as Christ taught us, is the most effective weapon for peace. I pray for this woman whom I do not know and the message from Isaiah this morning he will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. This is the image I see as I pray for this woman's safety, for her and her family and loved ones. So where 
in all of this world's madness are we to find peace? I'll give you a hint. Back in Isaiah's reading earlier, he told us, dear mortals, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. And don't we find that word of God standing with this woman who is in the birthplace of Emmanuel, God with us, standing in the aftermath of all that she has lost and continues to lose. And despite this, or maybe because of this, in the midst of the rubble and settling dust, this faith-filled woman witnesses to and proclaims the good news of Jesus, the promises of our risen and redeeming Christ. She witnesses how one person can bring about peace. And this, my friends, is a call for each one of us to let peace begin with me. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be with God as our Father. Brothers all are we. Let me walk with my brother in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Amen. My friends, our hymn of the day. Let me get the right one. Number 266, All Earth is Hopeful. Please stand as you're able.
With hope and expectation, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all who await the coming of Christ. God of compassion, send us forth with words of promise and forgiveness, emboldened to share the gospel. Strengthen all of us to be courageous and steadfast in revealing your good news in word and in deed. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Creator God, you reveal your majesty in mountain peaks, flowing rivers, and blossoming wilderness roads. Inspire us to be good stewards of your creation and to heal the earth where it longs for renewal. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Turn the hearts of all people toward righteousness and peace. Guide the leaders of all nations toward increased cooperation for justice between countries, commonwealths, political parties, and diplomatic leaders. In times of prosperity, inspire leaders to be generous for the sake of all. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Comfort your people with tender words of love and healing. Surround all who are grieving, all who experience depression or anxiety, or all who feel lonely or forgotten, especially Norma Rule, Greg Rule, Chase Mountain, Lloyd and Kathleen Widmeyer, Graham Pepler, Doug Bender, Florence Burr, Maria Geet, Mary Grawlman, Cliff Noon, and Marie Pepper. Be a steadfast presence when all else feels uncertain. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Grant patience and hope to all who are waiting this season. Give confidence to those seeking employment. Bring reassurance to people awaiting new diagnoses or treatments. Support expectant parents. Watch with those who keep bedside vigil. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of all ages, with you a thousand years is like a day. Bless the memory of the saints from ages past and the anticipation of saints yet to be born. Inspire us to follow the example of your faithful servants. Now in paradise with you as we await your new heaven and new earth. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. Listen to these and all our prayers, loving God, and restore us with your great and everlasting mercy. Amen. Amen. Friends, as our gifts are collected and brought forward, we are reminded of God's abundant love for us. These gifts of time, talent, and treasure we lift up to our Creator. For these are the offerings of our lives, our livelihoods, and the bounty of the earth. All that we are, we give for the feeding and healing of the world. Let us sing 742, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
us pray together. God, God our, our provider, by your merciful hand, abundance springs up from the earth. Receive and bless these gifts of your own bounty. Let them be a sign of your steadfast love and faithfulness for all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so, with all the choirs of angels, and with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy One, the beginning and the end and the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and the light. Blessed are you for your promises to your people. And blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. And blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. And blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection, and we look with hope for his coming. Come, come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us, bless this meal, and may your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people, fill us with your light, bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit, all praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And gathered into one through the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You beloveds are welcome guests at the Lord's table. It doesn't matter where you're from, who your parents are, what you wear, or who you love. This is the Lord's table, and all are welcome guests. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
we will begin our distribution with the outside aisles coming down and up to the front and the center following in behind.
please stand as you are able. May the bread of life and the cup of salvation strengthen you and keep you in, in grace now and always. Amen. Amen. Generous God, in bread and cup you have revealed your glory for all people to see together. Nourished by this meal, send us out to proclaim your good news of liberation and release brought to birth in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we could ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. God, the eternal word who dwells with us in Jesus and who holds us in the grace of the Holy Spirit, bless you and everyone you love now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our announcements. Now, you don't get to see this, but in my book, Tracy does all of this cutting and pasting and sticky notes for the announcement, so bear with me. Please, I invite you to take your bulletins home and make sure you have a good look uh, through. There is lots going on. We still have two Wednesdays for the Advent Cafe. Uh, if you were not able to join us this past Wednesday, try and come this coming Wednesday at 2 o'clock. And we have, on next Saturday, is our practice for the kiddos. And uh, they'll be leading service on the 17th. So um, we've got one day to practice. Excellent. Please note, there will be no 10 a.m. service on Sunday the 25th, uh, 24th. Uh, we'll have two services in the evening, one at 4 o'clock, which is a family service. It's going to be loud and noisy. And then uh, at 7 p.m. is our traditional candlelight service. Uh, what else? What else? Oh, the light of the world. Uh, there is a concert happening at uh, St. Peter's in Neustadt next Sunday at 4 o'clock. And uh, it's a group that is coming from Kitchener. And uh, I bet you they're going to fill that little place at St. Peter's. So. If you're able to make that, the admission is by donation. So no reason why any of us can't afford that. Uh, Sunday School Food Drive. So the Sunday School has challenged uh, all of us to bring in some uh, non-perishable donations. And, uh, and if you don't have food uh, to share, then uh, they'll gladly take your money. <laughs> So please, this is all in the uh, announcements uh, on your bulletin. So again, take time to read those. We have one birthday on December 12th for Mary Frances. Happy birthday, Mary. And before we sing to her, do we have any other birthdays? All right, let's sing to Mary. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. And many more. How about anniversaries? Anybody have a lovely December wedding? Nope. All right. Well, then let's just hold each other in our prayers throughout this week because we're all so special. With that, I would invite you to stand as you are able, join in our ascending hymn, 259, Fling Wide the Door.
keep awake. Thanks be to God. Please share a sign of God's peace with one another.